All processes that attract a payment will have a system-generated invoice or invoices as well as the accepted payment channels to be used. As such, you should not make any additional payments to facilitate the processing of your application. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the tutorial for partial discharge of charge application from LRA 59. A partial discharge happens when you have more than one property secured by the same loan and you want to release one of the properties as security without repaying the entire loan amount. For starters, you'll open your browser of choice and type rdsasa.lands.go.ke. Once you land on the login page, key in your rdsasa ID or national ID number as well as your password and then click continue. Upon doing so, you'll be provided with a one-time password code which will be sent to your phone number and email. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and click Login. You will then be navigated to the dashboard, where you will find a number of services listed under the departments we have within the State Departments of Lands and Physical Planning. The account you are logged in with, by default, is your private account. For you to initiate this process, you will need to switch to your Advocate account. So go ahead and click on the profile icon. It will display a drop-down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as an advocate. For more information on how to upgrade a professional account, check out our YouTube video through the link featured in the video description. On the landing page, navigate to the land registration section and click on view more, where you'll have a list of various land registration services. Click on charge, and the process we are applying for is partial discharge of charge from LRA 59, so go ahead and click on it. You will be directed to the applications page, and here there are a number of tabs provided. We have five tabs, namely pending, ongoing, completed, rejected, and cancelled. All applications that you have initiated as an advocate will be listed among the tabs provided depending on the level of processing of your application. The pending tab is for applications that you have initiated but have not completed. They still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have made and are submitted to the registration department for action. The completed tab is for applications which you have completed and have been validated by the relevant ministry officials. The rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. Reasons for rejection will be communicated to the applicant. And the cancel tab is for applications which have been cancelled by different parties involved in the application process. For you to initiate this application, you will click on the new application button on the top right hand corner. Please note that if you have not switched roles, the new application button will be unavailable. Afterward, you will be directed to a page with FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions specific to the partial discharge application. You can go ahead and explore the FAQs to get an understanding of this application. If satisfied, click Next. And you will be navigated to the charge details section. In this tutorial, the charge registered was of two parcels. Therefore, the partial discharge application seeks to discharge one parcel. First, you will enter the parcel number of the parcel that is to be discharged. Go ahead and enter the parcel number in the format, registry, forward slash block, and then the block number with no space in between, forward slash the parcel number. You will then enter the charge entry number. If you are discharging more than one parcel, you will proceed and type the second parcel in the same format, and click on add. You can add all parcels you want to include. But for this case, we are only going to discharge one parcel, which has one entry in the land register, and the details will be displayed below. It is important to note that the entries will be different for each parcel and or units. For this reason, ensure you enter the correct entry number as recorded in the land register. You will then proceed to the principal amount section, which is where you enter the consideration on the parcel charged. You will choose the currency for the principal amount and proceed to enter the amount. For currency, other than the Kenyan shilling, a current exchange rate will be required for the purpose of assessment of stamp duty. So proceed to enter the amount and click on Add, and the details will be displayed on the right. 
The next part is the charger details. Here, you will be required to provide the RDSSA ID of the charger. Proceed and enter the RDSSA ID. Then click on search. A pop-up box will appear requiring you to select the category of person to execute as the charger. It can either be the charger executing on his or her own behalf or an attorney executing on behalf of the charger. If you choose the attorney option, you'll click in the power of attorney, you'll key in the power of attorney entry number in the format registry forward slash the entry number forward slash month of registration forward slash year and then click on search and the power of attorney entry number will be listed underneath the search bar along with his or her RDSSA ID. If the RDSSA ID does not feature, it means the attorney has not transacted on RDSSA, and thus, you will be required to enter the RDSSA ID of said attorney and then click on Save. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will choose the Self option and then click on Save button. Upon doing so, the name of the chajo will be listed below and the name of the person executing on behalf of the chajo will be listed on the right. A key thing to note is that if you wish to change the chajo you picked for one reason or another, you can click on the remove button and you can then enter the correct RDSSA ID of the chajo. The next part is the chaji details. Here you will enter the RDSSA ID of the chaji. A pop-up box will appear requiring you to select the category of person to execute as the chaji. The person to execute as the chaji can either be the director or company secretary, the attorney or appointed signatories. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll choose the director or company secretary option, then proceed to enter the RDSSA ID. Then click on search and the name of the director or the company secretary will be listed below alongside his or her RDSSA ID. Then click on save. Lastly, you will fill in the borrower details where you will key in the RDSSA ID of the borrower. Then click on search and the details will be displayed below. If satisfied, click on next. And you will be navigated to the additional details page. Here, you will first fill in the whereas details. So proceed to enter the details and click add. And the details will be displayed below. We then proceed to the law firm details, where you'll provide the details of the law firm that you're acting under. Here you have the option of tying the application to a registered law firm on RDSSA, where you'll be required to type in the RDSSA ID of the law firm and then click on search, and the law firm details will automatically be populated. However, in our case, you will be manually keying in the law firm details. To begin with, enter the name of the law firm. Also provide the physical address of the law firm Provide the postal address of the law firm. You will enter the phone number of the law firm and you will also enter the email address of the law firm. As far as the website as well as the street address of the law firm are concerned, they are not mandatory fields to fill. However, you can provide the information required if available. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on Next. And you will be navigated to the Documents page, where you will upload the required documents. All documents marked with an asterisk sign must be uploaded. A key thing to note is that the documents should be in either the format .pdf, .png or .jpeg. So go ahead and click on the Choose File button to upload a scanned copy of the additional provisions from your local machine or device. And the document will be listed against the Choose File button. If you have any additional documents which you feel will support this process, you have the option of providing those documents on the additional documents link. An example of an additional document is the CR12 in case a company is among the parties in the transaction. If you are satisfied with the documents you have submitted to facilitate the application process, you can proceed and click on Next. The last step is the confirmation step with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on Submit. You also have the option of going back if you need to edit any information. For this case, we'll proceed and click on Submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click Yes. You will then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box which affirms that the application has been submitted successfully and then proceed and click on close. 
At this point, the parties involved will all get a notification on SMS as well as on email communicating that the partial discharge of charge application has been initiated. The advocate will also be notified to execute on the application with a signature and confirmed representation of some or all of the parties listed. The system automatically navigates you to the pending application tab after submission. When you click on view, you will be navigated to the application we just made. A key thing to note is that you can monitor your application progress using the progress bar, as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. As mentioned earlier, there are payments that are required for the application, and as such, the invoice tab shows the payment item and the amount to be paid. There are two payments to be made. First is the partial discharge of charge fee, which is standard across all registries, and the staff duty payment. The staff duty invoice will be available after assessment by the ministry officials. When you click on view, two options will be displayed, the invoice and the receipt. The receipt can only be viewed after the payment has been received. To make the payment, click on Paid, and you will be provided with the different methods of payment. After successful payment of the partial discharge fee, the status of the invoice shows Paid and the Receipt option is available. You can also download the invoice and the receipt at your convenience. The advocate received a notification to confirm representation for the party listed. The next step involves application verification, where the advocate decides whether to accept or reject representation for the parties involved. So go ahead on the execution section and click on accept for the parties they represent. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you want to represent the party. So proceed and click on accept. And all the parties involved will be notified that the advocate has accepted to represent him or her in the application. The last part is the Add Signature section, where he or she will be required to append their signature. There are a number of options on how to append your signature. To begin with, there is this signing area here as you can see, which allows you to sign with your computer mouse if you are using a desktop or a laptop, and alternatively with a stylus pen or your index finger if you are using a phone or tablet to access the platform. You also have the option of signing with another device. When you click on this option, a pop-up box will appear displaying four alternative options for signing. For more information on the available signing option on Ardisasa, kindly view our YouTube tutorial explaining the same through the link featured in the video description. In this case, the advocate will sign in the signing area. He or she will place the cursor on the blank space, press and hold the left click button and then go ahead and append the signature. If satisfied, he or she can click on save. However, if not pleased with it, there is the option of removing it by clicking on clear and then appending the signature once again to their liking. If satisfied with the signature, he or she will click on save. There is a pop-up box notification that will appear requiring you to affirm that you want to submit this as your signature. Click on yes and the signature status will change to signed. It is key to note that the advocate must be in communication with the parties involved through the verification process for ease of operations. The application verification section shows the parties involved haven't verified the application. As such, once the charger has logged in, he or she will navigate to the notification tab on the left side of the screen and check for the notification prompting him or her to verify the application. An OTP prompt box will be displayed with a Get OTP button alongside it. You can also find the application we just made by navigating to the Land Registration section and click on Charge, then Partial Discharge of Charge. It is important to note that below the OTP prompt box is a disclaimer for the party verifying. It instructs him or her to only enter the OTP code if he or she authorizes the application made on his or her behalf by the advocate involved in the process. So if the charger is aware of the process and approves it, he or she will then click on the Get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to their phone number. After receiving the OTP code, the charger will then key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and click on the Verify button. Upon doing so, a pop-up box will appear affirming that the OTP has been successfully verified. So he or she will go ahead and click on Close. The remaining party that hasn't verified the application is the chargee. The process of verifying the application is the same as that of the chargeo as shown earlier. Therefore, 
The individual will then click on Get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to their phone number that he or she used during registration. After receiving the OTP code, the individual will key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and click on the Verify button. Lastly, proceed to append your signature and affirm your signature. And by doing so, the chargee has completed the application by consenting to the application. As mentioned earlier, the stamp duty invoice is availed after assessment. Therefore, we will proceed to make the payment for the stamp duty. The payment process is the same as shown earlier. After the stamp duty invoice has been confirmed as paid, the submit button which is visible to the advocate will be active and they can now submit the application. So go ahead and click on the submit request button. You'll get a confirmation message. Click on yes and another notification will appear affirming that the application has been submitted successfully and then go ahead and click on close. Upon doing so, you'll notice that the progress level of application has advanced from the initial 40% to 60%. As the various ministry officials involved in the process work on it, you'll be able to view the progression of your application on the progress bar up until the final approval is done. And at that point, the progress level will be at 100%. Once your application has been fully approved by the ministry, all parties involved will be notified that the partial discharge of charge application has been approved. That's it for this tutorial for partial discharge of charge application on Ardisasa. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Kindly follow us on our social media handles as well, that is Ardisasa underscore KE on X and Instagram and at Ardisasa on Facebook. Thanks for watching and goodbye.